My name is Nigel Russell. I work at Guy's Hospital in London, the Department of Hematology, and I'm currently the Chief Investigator on the UK NCRI AML18 and AML19 trials. Starting with AML19, which is a trial for young patients with AML and high-risk MDS greater than 10% bars. This trial was completed, ran from 2015 to 2020, for five years and recruited almost 2,000 patients. And I actually presented data on the outcome of this analysis, um, predominantly in patients under the age of 60, although there was about 10% of patients who were over the age of 60. And there was a randomized question between intensive chemotherapy with um, DA, 60, 3 plus 7 type regimen, or 3 plus 10 in the UK, uh, randomized against flag IDA, um, two courses of each, followed by consolidation with high dose cytarabine. There was also a randomization to receive a single or fractionated dose of gm 2 azithromycin or GO. So patients are randomized between one or two doses of GO given on days one or days one and four. So there's a four-way randomization, DA go one, DA go two, versus flag IDA one, versus flag IDA go two, followed by second induction, followed by up to two cycles of consolidation treatment. And to summarize the results, the remission rates of this, this, this part of the trial was uh, all patients were eligible, except for those who had known adverse risk cytogenetics. The reason being that we know that those patients don't benefit from gem 2 -zamel. Um, so the overall results showed a high response rate. The overall response rate after the second cycle of induction was over 90% in both arms, and there was no difference in um, response rates. And there, neither was there any difference in early mortality, day 30 and day 60, although there was a trend towards a slightly higher day 60 mortality with the fractionated dose of gm 2 map two doses compared to one dose. Looking at overall, so looking at event free survival, there was a significant event free survival benefit for the flag IDA GO regimen over the DA GO regimens. There was no difference between the doses of GO 1 or GO 2, but when we compared outcome of flag IDA GO, GO 1, GO 2, versus DA GO 1, GO 2, there was a significant EFS benefit for flag IDA GO. However, this was lost on overall survival, and the uh, overall survival uh, analysis showed no difference in the 1,040 patients that entered this randomization. However, when we looked at subgroups, there are some impressive differences in outcome dependent upon the molecular type of AML. The most frequently mutated gene was FLIT3, which was mutated in about 30% of patients, uh, 25 to 30% of patients. And in these patients, there was a, a EFS and a significant overall survival benefit for flag IDA GO. Survival was improved by 10% in the flag IDA GO arm uh, at over 60% compared to over 50% in patients with um, receiving DA GO. And the outcome for patients with flag IDA GO was comparable, if not superior, to that achieved with in the ratified trial with DA and mitostorin as the backbone chemotherapy. I should add that these patients did not receive a FLIT3 inhibitor. There was also a significant uh, EFS and overall survival benefit for patients with NPM1 mutated AML, such that patients receiving flag ida go had an 18% improvement in survival with flag ida go compared to DAGO. Um, so the survival in the flag ida go patients was over 80% at five years. And this was supported by data on M MRD, MPM1, RTQPCR, MRD, showed a significant um, improvement in MR achievement in our MRD negativity uh, following the second cycle of induction chemotherapy. And, and more patients um, um, were MRD negative at the end of treatment, at the end of four cycles of therapy in the flag either go arm compared to Diego. There was no, however, benefit for patients with core binding factor leukemias. We also had a randomization in AML19 for patients with known adverse risk cytogenetics at diagnosis. And there were 190 patients entered this randomization between uh, flag IDA without gemtuzumab and CPX351. 
Uh, the question here was, um, in younger patients with AML, high-risk AML, we know that CPX351 is superior to DA chemotherapy in secondary AML in older patients. The question we are asking about its role is benefit in younger patients with high-risk AML as defined by the presence of adverse risk cytogenetics. And this randomization showed no, uh, was actually presented at EHA uh, last year, in June last year, and showed no overall survival benefit for CPX over flag either. However, there was an improvement in relapse free survival with CPX, B51, compared to flag either, and there was an increased number of patients receiving CPX who underwent allogeneic transplant in first remission, which was the aim of this approach to consolidate with allot stem cell transplantation. The data we presented at ASH was an update on this, and we'd undertaken detailed genomic analysis of the majority of patients who went into this study. What we found was interesting. Uh, we categorized patients as having either de novo AML with adverse risk cytogenetics, or clinically had a history of secondary AML or therapy-related AML. And what we observed was that patients with uh, when we looked at the clinical diagnosis, there was no benefit of CPX for patients with a clinical diagnosis of secondary AML, and neither was there a benefit for uh, CPX in patients with um, MDS-related AML diagnosed on the basis of cytogenetic abnormalities. But there was a basis based on genomic analysis. There was benefit based on genomic analysis. So there was an insignificant improvement in overall survival in patients with, in this, in this, in this randomization, the set be about 40% of patients who had secondary AML as defined by genomic abnormalities of MDS-related genes. And this, uh, how, this benefit, however, didn't extend to patients who were, had a mutation on, of the TP53. So flag IDA on CPX had equivalent poor results in patients with TP53 mutations. But for secondary AML mutations without TP53 mutations, CPX351 in, our, in this study showed a significantly improved overall survival in patients to, compared to patients with leading flag IDA. And I think this has implications for how we use CPX in the future. It will be increasingly important to have, have available upfront genomic analysis to decide which patients perhaps should base that would be best treated with CPX to maximize outcomes. For example, patients with a clinical diagnosis of secondary AML without um, secondary AML mutations or with TP53 mutations may be best treated with alternative therapies, whereas patients with secondary AML genomic features, mutations, uh, are very are excellent candidates for treatment with CPX. Finally, I'm going to mention the AML18 trial. This is a trial for older patients with AML predominantly over the age of 60 up to 75. And this was a randomization. And we again looked at the question of the gemtuzumab dose, whether a fractionated dose of gemtuzumab was superior to a single dose of gemtuzumab. Uh, this study was also um, excluded patients with known adverse risk cytogenetics of diagnosis due to the lack of benefit of gemtuzumab in this subgroup. Uh, and, what we, and what we found in the over 800 patients that were randomized was there was no overall survival benefit for to the, two, the fractionated dose of gemtuzumab, DAGO2, compared to DAGO1. However, some of the patients who entered the trial, about 14%, did enter with unknown adverse risk cytogenetics or TP53 mutations. And when we did a sensitivity analysis to exclude those patients from the analysis, a survival benefit for DAGO2 over DAGO1 emerged. And this was associated with a better flow MRD response post course one. So patients receiving DAGO2 were more likely to be flow MRD negative post course one or and low level flow level, a low level flow MRD negative. Um, uh, when we did further analysis, about 30% of patients in this study went on to receive an, a reduced intensity allogeneic transplant, stem cell transplant, in first remission. 
And this benefit of DAGO2 was clearly seen in those patients that were transplanted compared to those who were transplanted for, uh, having received DAGO1. When we centered for transplant, uh, the DAGO2 benefit was lost. So the uh, what we had, how we interpret this data was that DAGO2 gave a superior, not overall response rate, but a superior um, rate of MRD negativity, low level MRD. And when this was consolidated by a transplant in first remission, these patients had a pure, superior survival to patients who received DAGO1. And we feel this is an important observation because uh, although about 30, over 30% 30 of patients in this study went on to receive a transplant, many patients in this age group will not be eligible for a transplant or not have a suitably matched donor. And if uh, the, the, the better MRD response that patients get, then the, 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 perhaps the greater the likelihood that they will get a um, durable remission following consolidation chemotherapy and maintenance, for example, with agents such as oral azacytosine. So we feel that this study has implications for the choice of induction chemotherapy in older AML patients, whether they are transplant fit and eligible or whether they are not. Thank you very much.